What is love? What is it not? Where do we find it? How do we give it? Love is probably the most misunderstood word in the English language, maybe in any language. We all want it. We dream about it. We write songs and make movies about it. Dialogue about it fills our popular culture. So why is it so difficult to define? If you've ever wondered about love and what it really means, you'll want to stick around for this Valentine's special. Whether you are married, in a relationship, or as single as you ever were, this video is for you. This video is sponsored by Canyon Foot and Ankle. From simple nail care to advanced trauma and reconstructive care, their podiatrists have the training and skills needed to resolve even the most complex cases. Treat your feet to the exceptional care they deserve. What is love? Well, you know, one of my favorite songs back in the 1980s when I was a teenager was by Howard Jones, and it was called What is Love Anyway? I love you whether or not you love me. I love you even if you think I don't. Sometimes I find you doubt my love for you, but I don't mind. Why should I mind? And so Howard goes into the chorus, what is love anyway? Does anybody love anybody anyway? Can anybody love anyone so much that they will never fear, never worry, never be sad? Can I love somebody into happiness that isn't already happy? No. And I think Howard Jones is telling us that you can't, that you can't really love someone into happiness. You can't even love them into loving you. And then he goes on, the answer is they cannot love this much. Nobody can. This is why I don't mind you doubting. If you doubt that I love you, that's a human thing. And maybe love is letting people be just what they want to be. Bingo. Love in real unconditional love is giving your partner their agency, allowing them to be what they want to be. And sometimes, and I found this in relationships I had as a mid-single, there was someone who chose out of a relationship, somebody I loved and loving her meant letting her go. And that was hard for me, but I found compensations in the future. But sometimes love requires us to give somebody up because that's what they've chosen. That's who they want to be. Right, so it's not just letting people be who they are personality-wise, but letting them make choices and honoring those choices. Right, letting them be what they want to be, do what they want to do. And then he says, the door always must be left unlocked. To love when circumstance may lead someone away from you, which is what we just talked about and not to spend the time just doubting. So when he talks about leaving the door unlocked, it means you're not locking somebody in, right? You're not forcing them to love you or to stay with you. If they stay, they choose it and it's a gift. It is a gift. Now that we're done with the lyrics to the song, I'd like to steer in another direction. So I'm a violinist and in my string quartet, Strings of Elegance, we've played for hundreds, maybe even thousands of weddings over the last 20 something years. And there's a very common wedding scripture given at a lot of weddings that we've played for. It's in 1 Corinthians 13, four through six. And this is the version from the King James Bible and it states, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. This scripture has a lot of words in it about what love is and what it is not. Love is patient. Well, Kathy and I lived together, as most married couples do. And because we live together and we associate with each other more than any other person, do we step on each other's toes occasionally? Do we? bump up against each other's emotional sunburns. That, and we literally keep each other waiting sometimes. Right. It requires patience. And so, and we have to put up with each other's little quirks, you know, like any other married couple. But Paul teaches here, love is patient and love is kind. And it isn't always easy when you're putting up with the same quirks every day. We're putting up with the same quirks every day. Why? Because we're married and we've chosen that one person to be with. And so being patient is something we develop in marriage that we really couldn't develop nearly as well in single life. 
The word kind reminds me of something Jeff's friend says about marriage. He's a family life professor and he has been married a long time. They have a lot of kids. And he said, marriage is really a lot of the time about just being nice to each other. And I think that goes along with kind. Right, and I think sometimes we're tempted to be a little snappy with each other or you know something gets on our nerves that we've dealt with a thousand times before and i was thinking about dr greg bear you know he wrote a book called real love which he believes is unconditional love and he said every now and then you know he will slip up he'll be walking through a room and his wife asks him a question or something and he says something kind of snappy and he'll exit the room and then a few steps into the next room he thinks darn it i did it again and he turns around and walks back and tells his wife, gee, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have said that. And he says, she never lets me off. She always says, yeah, you weren't. The, the point is that we kind of do need to catch ourselves once in a while because none of us are gonna get this right all the time. And it seems like patience is required sometimes for the kindness. When we're patient, we're more likely to be kind. Now on to talk about what love is not. It's not envious or boastful or proud. Why do you think that all three of those words are used there? Well, with envy, you know, I remember I wrote you a letter. It's been a while now. I'm, I mean, coming up on six years ago, I asked you to date me for marriage and I made a promise. I said, even if you don't choose me, I'll still love you, I'll still care about you. You'll still be my friend. Now, I'm not saying it wouldn't have been hard for me if you had chosen someone else, but I think well, when I said I would still care, I would still love you, you would still be my friend if you chose someone else, did that appeal to you or did you think, oh, he must not like me very much if he's willing to let somebody else have me? Oh, no. I, I knew what it meant and that was you demonstrating real love with me. And it wasn't like that at the beginning of our dating journey. You really wanted me to yourself and you didn't want to share and you didn't want to. Well, I still want that. <laughs> of course. But, you know, when we first met, I wasn't ready for that kind of commitment yet. And you were really wanting and pushing for that. And I didn't feel like I had a choice to go at my own pace. And so when I got this letter after a year of friendship, after we'd taken a whole year to just be friends, it meant a lot to me. A lot. It was probably one of the most loving things that I've ever experienced. Real love doesn't envy, and if that person should choose out, someone you're dating who you really care about, but he or she chooses out and goes in a different direction, do we transform into somebody we don't recognize or they wouldn't recognize? And that's why I'm a big fan of remaining friends, or at least remaining in good feelings towards our former dating partners, because if we dated them and we really cared about them, well, we won't stop caring because they chose someone else. Right, but Envy would. Envy would say, you chose someone else, you're out of luck, I'm, I'm through with you. And then it talks about not being boastful or proud, and to me, they're very similar, so why do you think both words are there? And boastful and proud could, could both mean that I'm boasting or being more, or trying to be more than I am to win the other person's affection, and maybe there's not much honesty in that. So boasting in the dating world would be being in the authentic, not being truly real in who we are. And I, you know, one thought I had is proud might be there because that's more something that happens inside. So boasting is something we do with other people or we do in the presence of to impress people. Whereas pride is something that happens in our hearts and our minds when we are one up when we put ourselves above others. Or even one down. It's in the comparison. But there's also bottom-up pride. I'm really not good enough to be dating the person I'm dating. They're probably gonna drop me because I'm not worthy of them. Or That's also pride. Or wish I was rich. Right? Have you ever heard that one? The scripture also talks about not dishonoring others, not saying things that are unkind about them to other people, or maybe even disrespectful. So that means when I do something for someone, it's because I really want to, not because I'm trying to get something back. It is not easily angered. Right, if you, if you do that in a self-seeking or selfish way, then it's love really becomes transactional. It's I'm in a relationship to get something. I think whenever you're in a relationship to get things, you're usually gonna be disappointed. It is not easily angered. Now, this is a big one. You and I both 
uh, at one point were in relationships with people who were really easily angered and oh, yeah. it made it impossible to stay in the relationship and still feel like we could be happy humans. How does it feel when you walk around on eggshells because you're always worried that your partner may explode? It, it's not a very happy feeling, right? It kind of ties you up in knots in your lower abdomen. And I want to say this about anger too. Some people say, well, anger is not a primary emotion. It, it has no real function. It, it derives from other emotions and we fake, we fake it. I don't think so. I don't think that's true. I think anger is a primary emotion and it has a function. But what do people feel from you when you get angry at them? They feel like an enemy, right? It puts a wedge between you. So you want to be very careful not to express anger toward your loved ones. It keeps no record of wrongs. So letting things go. It's really we bring them up because they're still in us. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth, which means love is truth. Dr. Greg Bear wrote an entire book called Real Love that explains that love not freely given is not real, that it's imitation love. Let's suppose you want somebody to do something for you and you force or manipulate. It may be temporarily validating because you got what you wanted, but you didn't really. Deep down you know that it wasn't freely given, that the person did it because you manipulated them. And that's not real love, that's imitation love. So real love is not controlling, it is freely given. When someone loves you that way, the wind never blows quite so cold again because it is freely given and you, you know it. And you know they accept you for who you really are. That means love, all love that is real is a gift. It's not something that can be earned. It's not a reward. Love is actually a law. It's a commandment. We read in the scriptures that God is love and that we're created in his image. So we believe we're love too. Think about it. Love is who we are at our core. A lot of things in this life get in the way of accessing and feeling and using the love that we have inside of us. But as we obey the two great commandments to love God and all his children, we get aligned with the truth of who we are and whose we are. We'd like to pose the question to you, our audience. How do you define love? How do you understand it? What does it mean to you? Please share your thoughts about love in the comments. And remember, any time is a great time for more real love in your life. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining us for another week on LilyTube. If you enjoy what you see, support us by liking, commenting, and sharing your favorite videos with others who could benefit. As single life and relationship coaches, our mission is to help single adults intentionally heal from loss to create a happy life and healthy relationships. Keep coming back and we'll keep you encouraged. Each week, we provide new and refreshing perspectives on the challenges and opportunities of mid-single life. If you'd like to immerse yourself deeper into your own personal development and relationship journey, visit our website at loveinlateryears.com for even more resources. Don't take on divorce recovery and other relationship loss and single life alone. We are here for you.